So in this video, Lori from Tech Notice and myself are discussing cores and thread. Do you need a more expensive CPU to get more performance? Or do the cores and threads and the upgrade path and exponential higher cost for a more powerful CPU really make a difference inside of each individual app? Obviously, we know that more cores and threads is more multitasking, but is it really more advantageous to have a more expensive CPU? That's what we're discussing today. I don't even know Lori's thoughts yet. We're just going to dive right into this. Yeah, I think first point I'd like to make is like, is budget a problem, right? Because some people think, okay, I just want the best that works for me, but they might not be limited to a budget. And then they just think, look, I don't want to spend any more, even if they could, but I just want the one that really works the best for me. Because um, I've recently seen a very interesting comment on the comment section below. Someone like one of the viewers said that, every single time there's like a new platform released, they just buy the most like highest one because then they just know that they they don't have to worry about later. Oh, should I have gone with a higher one or should I have changed? They just- They don't have to second guess themselves. Yeah, they just buy the highest one and then just forget themselves like for the next few years and then find the highest one again and buy it. But that really requires, you know, you to have no problems with money and you're just, happy to you know cash out i don't know a few grand and no problem with that so th that's my first well point, I, guess I guess budget budget is something that is very personal like people often hear the word budget and they think cheap and that's not true budget is the money allotted for the decision that you're making and so you know even for me when i was um picking my for instance my desktop pc uh, CPU, I had a budget of around $400. Like I wanted to spend around four to 450 and that and landed me on the Ryzen 9 3900X, which was a higher core and thread CPU because I was doing a lot of multitasking, okay? But for me, if I wasn't doing more multitasking, I could have been fine probably on the Ryzen 5 like CPU because the difference in like single core performance was not as much. And so like, I think like this guy is saying, he's like, I'll just buy the highest. So I don't have to think about it, but that's, that's basically predominantly nobody. Like as a whole, that's only like 5% of buyers can really do that. Um, and so yeah. let's say, or probably big companies as well, True. probably big companies, they just buy the best or if, if they, in the end of the year, they have left over some budget or whatever, they think, okay, shall we spend it on marketing or upgrading our tech? Depends whichever one they need more or we need tech, just buy the best ones, you know. But even at that point, sorry if I'm cutting you into something, I think even at that, um, you might be losing performance by going with the highest ones. Like there isn't like ultimate return yes. by upgrading. And that's the question the I want to answer. Yeah. So depends on the program. Some programs can utilize uh, a lot of different cores. And some programs can't. For example, After X, Adobe After Effects recently uh, updated their like the way they actually utilize the hardware. And now multi-core CPUs actually make sense for uh, After Effects. Previously, like an eight-core was like maximum. Above eight-core, it just didn't make sense because it started to slow down. Uh, but now, finally, you can have like a Threadripper 64-core uh, CPU for After Effects, and it will actually be faster because it can do multi-frame rendering. And that makes sense. So like I just ran a benchmark on the 12900K desktop CPU. And um, for After Effects, I think the score was like 1300. And then right behind that was the Mac, yeah, was the Mac, you fun boy, was the MacBook Pro um, M1 Max at 1200 and then the M1 Pro at 1100. So in that respect, more cores and more threads really made a difference because the next CPU on the list, uh, let me look at this real quick. The next CPU on the list is the HP Omen with the i7-11800H at a 796. And this is with the new which, benchmarks. Which benchmark is this? I ran all of the new ones. This is After Effects. After yeah. Effects. How much yeah. was the uh, 12900K uh, 12, again? For me, the 12900K was actually exactly 1242. So 1242. Yep. And then Max was how much behind? The Max was 1203 and the M1 Pro was oh, okay. 1104. So, you know, that's where we're seeing that multi-core performance make a difference. Um, however, if you go to something like um, like Photoshop, um, you're going to see that the sliding scale is extremely slow. So, for instance, with Photoshop, I have an HP Omen with a Ryzen 7 5800H with a score of 841. 
And then I have the Ryzen 5 5600H and HP Victus at an 805. So 40 points. And those 40 points are, are minimal, are nothing. And so if I were to be running Premiere Pro and Photoshop and Spotify and Google Chrome at the same time, I should probably choose the HP Omen with eight cores and 16 threads because that'll give me more multi-core performance, more multitasking performance. However, if it's the if, if I'm just running Photoshop and Spotify, I really should just go with the 5600H because that's not making a big difference. Uh, I think there's also, I'll just throw, throw another, you know, onion in the pot. Uh, there is, depends what you do with the application as well. For example, if you're doing a lot of Font photo conversion, for example, in Photoshop, then the multi-core can also utilize it. Or if you move to Lightroom, for example, then Lightroom has two separate tasks. One is active task and one is passive tasks. Active. So it's splitting those yeah, up. So basically active is when you're working on a photo and then passive task is when you're rendering like lots of them out. Let's say you're a wedding videographer or photographer, sorry, and you've you've got like, I don't know, 3,000 photos and they're just exporting the raw photos mm. to JPEGs. Uh, like how how fast is this is? And then when you're doing that, then the multi-cores, uh, you know, like jump in. That would make a ton yeah. of sense. So I think, I think it's the same with like different programs. If you look at like Premiere Pro, even like uh, there's separate parts of the benchmarks, basically, you can see that it really matters what p thing you're really doing. Like Warp Stabilizer can utilize a lot of cores and threads, which would be awesome if it did. And uh, But at the same time, like if you're doing live playback and you've got, um, I don't know, 6K, 8K clip, just press play. Look, every single thread, every single core is utilized. It just plays it back with the full power of the CPU. Well, that makes sense because I was using the 12900K and I got zero drop frames in red, in red 6K footage, which no laptop has been able to do on my channel. Yeah, and um, Ryzen is even better at that. I've, I've really like, I just did like a recent update to the 12900K and RTX 3090, like balls to the wall system, um, like playback on Premiere Pro. And I realized that, okay, it plays a little bit better than previously because you know everything's updated and this, it's more stable but it's still not as good as like the Ryzen 9 5900X, that's 12 core. Every single core is performance core because um, Ryzen uh, 5900X, oh, which is 12. Oh, with Intel, it's, isn't it yeah. eight and eight? Eight efficiency, eight performance. Yeah, exactly. So it's like hybrid. They're not equal cores. You know, some cores are very powerful and some are just like little guys, you know, that are doing stuff around it. Um, so Ryzen was much better at playing back like high resolution raw codex, which is just like, you know, big boys like red, raw or uh, yeah, red raw specifically, really, even the black magic raw. As soon as we did like raw, then Intel was like starting to be a little bit issue or couldn't find like what to do exactly. CPU was 100 percent utilized, but then Ryzen was better at that time. So it even depends on a CPU cause because you can look at like Ryzen 9, that's 12 cores, and 12900K, that's got 16 cores, then even they aren't really equal. So like, if you want to say like cores and threads, it's like, it gets a bit more complicated because one of them is hybrid and things. Yeah, and really, for sure. Even like what application it is, because there are some applications that are only based on Intel systems, for example, and there are some applications that like can do yeah. both. And so, for example, if you're really wanting to utilize your software, for example, you're some kind of art architect or you've got a very um, sophisticated or very uh, like a specific program that you use in your workshop doing, you know, modeling some kind of thing, then on the software website, often it says like system requirements. And if they doesn't mention Ryzen, for example, but only like i7 minimum or whatever, then I would definitely go with only i7 or mm. Intel because their whole program it has yeah. been tested or built on like an Intel architecture or just how Intel CPUs work. Because even Intel and AMD, yeah. they don't work. Would it still work on Ryzen? It could, but it might not either, actually. Because there are some programs, I know actual architects who, who have said, why is my system not working? Because I'm using Ryzen. Because they just looked at BG PC benchmarks and, oh, Ryzen's better. They went with Ryzen. But then my program's crashing and it's not stable and I'm losing my work. It's because the whole program code has been optimized for like an Intel system on oh, this way.
So I think that's really what it boils down. Hey, that's what it boils down to is like knowing what you're going to be using your laptop for, like not laptop, your, your, your system for like, what are you going to be doing and purchasing based on your needs? Not like fanboyism or what gamers are saying. If you're not a gamer, what video editors are saying, if you're not a video editor, like that's our whole goal is to make videos for every creative profession. Like, and that's that's what we're striving after. We don't always nail it because we're still learning how to run benchmarks and and all those things. But like Lori is saying, um, for instance, on a GPU landscape, a, a Quadro GPU workstation is going to work better, period, on something like SolidWorks or Revit because they were built to work on those systems. And so that's the thing with like what Lori is saying right now, find the CPU that is built that the architecture was built around for the program and then go from there. But I think like, let's do like one final takeaway, like hot take. Do you think more cores in general and more threads will, will benefit you in a single app or will not as a whole? Okay, I'd say with a clause, if you're a photo editor, no. If you're a video editor, yes. If that makes sense. Okay, because- Because I think for photo, photo editor, you can do all your multi, core uh, tasks like overnight or just leave it there to do but for video editing it could be a bottleneck for example let's say you are using 4k editing and you have a dual core cpu it doesn't matter how fast your single core speed is you're just not going to be able to do it you need a little bit more cores to just push through that codec or that you know over there and you can't even load it onto gpu um, depending on a codec some of them can but i think i'd say if you are photographer then it doesn't matter if your video 3d model anything else i think then it starts to make sense what do you think uh, i see i would i uh, up until this point i would say i would disagree with you because um programs have not been utilized for multi-core what we're seeing is programs start to be utilized for multi-core and so up until this point i just said no like just cores and threads frequency speed like just look at that do, do you do a lot of multitasking no okay fine now, if your budget doesn't allow you to go above a certain limit, know that you're not going to be greatly limited by it. But I would say as we're moving forward, just like After Effects is now optimizing itself for multi-core, video editing programs are optimizing, Photoshop most likely in the next couple of years will, will even more increase its optimization for multi-core. I think that's kind of the next move. Um, and so I would say to future-proof yourself, I would say, yes, it is. But I think in general, if you don't have the budget, don't freak out and don't be overwhelmed that you can't get that seven or nine from Ryzen or the seven or nine from Intel. Um, that is less of a concern overall if you're just wanting to, if you're going to be using single app performance and not a lot of multitasking. Yeah, I agree. I think I just put some <laughs> some ink in my mouth. <laughs> Wouldn't be much different from what our uh, children do on the day to day. Anyway, comment below, join the conversation. Let us know what you think. We're curious about your thoughts. We want to know what other videos you want us to make and conversations you want us to have. So if you've made it this long in the video, vote now. We'll know you're a true watcher and we will value your uh, uh, question and hopefully get that filmed in the next couple of weeks here. We're enjoying these conversations with you guys. Go on over, check out Lori's channel if you're a desktop PC creative professional kind of guy. If you like laptops, that's my thing. And uh, drop us a like here. Do all the things that we do on YouTube and we'll talk to y'all soon. Later.